Hey, did anyone actually bring the paper that I actually gave you? Look at that. Word up. See, wasn't that so much better? It's like TikToks. We can do them over and over and over again. It's good. We're going to have so much fun this fall. See, look, you all are actually like so much more relaxed because now we're on TV. You're chilling. You're hanging out. No one's the weird guys not standing in front of you this time. Why is this one girl driving? Like, why is she late for practice? What's going on? This one chick is driving. What is happening? <laughs> oh, keep your eyes on the road. I don't, what are you doing? Now you're looking at me. It's all good. I'm just messing with you. How come? I'm looking at my maps. No. All right. Well, when there's a place you got to go, it's the one you need to know. It is the map. Look at you. All of you know it. All of you. Because you're all just in the, around the same age as Jess. Megan, I love your back screen. Yes. Oh, mine's good, too. See that? There you go. That's good. Who's Megan? Oh, there's Olivia. Hi, Olivia. Olivia, don't pay attention to any of these girls. None okay. of them. This is this is what real college life is like, Olivia. <laughs> This is what real college life is. Wow, look at this. We have two full pages. How cool is that? You guys are all gangsters. My phone's buzzing now. All right, cool. So I'm going to give it about two or three minutes. I don't have a roll call sheet, but whatever. There's a bunch of you in here. Coach Rob is in here. Say hi to Coach Rob. Coach Rob is a travel ball coach who's in here to immerse himself and learn in knowledge so that he can take it back to his young players and make them better. Good for you, Coach Rob. And then there's a Huddy, Huddy in the house. <laughs> hey, is, is, all right, anyways, I'm going to keep going. Hey, there's a coach. Where's Coach, uh, where's Coach Todd at? Is Buckingham at the palace? What's he doing? Nobody liked my joke. Grace liked my joke. Nobody did. All right. Well, we're going to give it about two or three more minutes. Oh, what's up? I'm going to talk to you. How you doing? I'm good. Cool. Tell the group a little bit about yourself, Oh. Um, I'm Olivia Lewis. I'm a 2028. I'm on Team Tampa Castillo. And I'm a third, second, and catcher. Cool. Cool. There you go. 2028. Who's who's a senior in here? Who's a senior at Weber? So that made you, what year is that? 2020 what? 2020. What, what year did you graduate high school? 21. 21. So there you go. Seven years, seven year gap from the senior in college to the freshman in high school. There you go. Cool. What's up, Coach Rob? I saw you pop in there. How you doing? Good, buddy. How you doing, man? Good, man. So this is a great group of girls. They're a lot of fun. They like to uh, make fun of me because most of them I've known since they were 10, 11 years old in some way, shape, or form. So especially Huddy. She likes to push me around and be a bully. Now, where's Hello. Sailor? Is Sailor in here? No. Oh, there she is, waving her hand. She's with Nicole. So Sailor plays at Weber. She won a state championship for me at Ab or for me with me at Admiral Farragut. I'll tell you, you weren't there two weeks ago, so I'll tell you the story. So I'm coaching Admiral Farragut. We're in a regional playoff game. The next win takes us to states, right? I call Bunt. Sailor looks at me. She still, I still don't know if she actually read the sign or not, but she absolutely did not bunt, and she hit a three-run home run on the next pitch. I called Bunt. She hit a dinger. We won by eight. It was great. So cool. Real life experience stuff. All right. How about Mike? Coach Mike on here? They just sent y'all to me and we're like, we're going out. You guys have fun. Let me know how it goes. All good. So we're going to get rocking and rolling. Again, if you brought your paper from two weeks ago, hold that up. Show it. Yeah, that's called engagement. We love that. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just on the front, right? And I just want you to chime in. I want you just to, you've had this for two weeks. So hopefully most of you dug it out of your backpack before a half hour ago uh, and, and, you know, used it and engaged with it. And if you did, uh, this is the time to kind of say, hey, this is what I found. This is what was successful. This is what I didn't uh, find successful. This is what I struggled with over the last two weeks because, you know, two weeks ago we talked, we were all working towards a national championship. We were all working towards being number one and being engaged and stepping up and turning it up to that next level. So who can engage and tell me, I'm, I'm just going to go to Huddy because she bullies me. I'm going to bully her. So intentional effort. What did we talk about intentional effort? What intentional effort did you put into practice this week? Uh, and and how did it work out for you? Um, Intentional effort is putting in the work and making each rep count. Um, Yesterday, we had like live hitting situations. And my first at bat, I kept pulling out my front shoulder. So I went back in the cages and I did a drill that was focused on keeping my front shoulder in. And that was how I did it this week. Cool. And did you have anybody giving you feedback? Were the coaches, other players, anybody else giving you feedback on those corrections? No, well, because I kind of felt it myself because it's a thing that I've been working on for the past couple of months. Okay. So I kind of felt it and then went on and did it on my own. Got it. Anybody else want to share where maybe they were working on something? So uh, where you're blah, 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 where you're working on something where maybe you took something to practice and it got better for you. Was that a hand up there, Miss Bland, or were you just stretching? She's like, no, I was stretching. I'm good. <laughs> All right, cool. Here, go ahead. Oh, my Olivia, my 2028, she wants to share. Go ahead. Be the example, Oh, I love it. Um, I've been working on my load and slowing it down. <laughs> Whoa. So if you want to know who this is, I invited a couple of the players that I've been working with right? To engage with you guys. So the person asked, who is this? Uh, this is Olivia. She's a 2028 graduate. She's a freshman in high school. She's been working in my program with me for six months. And when, uh, I don't know, 30, 20 some year olds were asked to engage, a 14 year old raised their hand to give an answer. So that's who Olivia is. So go ahead, Oh. Um, I've been working on not rushing my load. So I've been doing a lot of drills to just feeling on like feeling the motion and me taking it slower and taking time to see the pitch. I love it. So when we went over two weeks ago, we were said we're when you're in the batter's box, right? You're looking for a quality pitch that you can drive in order to get on base and help your team. So you guys, you said, Huddy, you said you guys are just working swings, right? You were working swings in the cage. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So one of the things that coach Todd said that obviously he wants to work on is increasing average, increasing on base percentage, increasing runs, RBIs, quality at bats. So when you take intentional effort to work, when you take intentional effort to your practice, right, this is that goal oriented stuff. Like right now, like about 60% of you are engaged in what I'm saying because we're in an in a in a virtual environment. About 40% of you are doing homework, looking at other things, laughing at stuff. And that's cool. Somebody in here is going to take this to your team, and somebody in here is going to put in the work, and somebody's going to lead and work on that national championship. So when you're going in the cages, here's how we get better. Right. Doing just that. I noticed that things did not feel right. I got feedback from a teammate. I got feedback from a coach. I put my phone up that I use to make all these videos and TikToks and do all this fun stuff. I got that little stand up tripod and I recorded my lesson so I could go back and look at it myself and give myself instant feedback. Because, again, if we're building champions, if we're building mindset, if we want to get better, if we're that freshman that wants to break into the lineup, if we're that sophomore that now they got video on and they know who we are and we want to enter coach Todd Buckingham to the palace. Attention on deck. Everybody's supposed to stand up. No. All right. Cool. So coach Todd's in the house. So just to catch you up, we're talking about intentional effort, right? So if your goal is to increase your quality at bats, to increase your RBIs, to increase your doubles, your triples, your extra base hits. If these are your goals, you can't just say them. You have to have that intentional 
effort, that, that point written down, that goal when I go into the cage every day, when I go out of the field every day, I'm working with the intent to get better. Here I want 10 to the left. I want 10 to the right. I'm pulling. So I need 10 corrections going the opposite way. These are the things that I have to have in order to find progress. In order to find success down the path that I'm going, I have to make those adjustments. I can only make adjustments when I have intentional effort, right? So any opportunity for anybody to be an example this week, right? Maybe a teammate was struggling. Maybe somebody needed a ride. I had to show up. Uh, maybe you just went in and did extra work this week because you wanted everybody to step up. So just think in your mind, how can I put an intentional effort, right? What are, what are our, I said this two weeks ago, what are our team goals? You should be going over your team goals every time you meet up. What is our goal for this individual practice, right? Because we have our long-term goal, right? When you're in travel ball, it was to win a national championship and get recruited. When you're in college, right, it's to get an internship, graduate and win a national championship. So we all are, all our long-term goals are the same for the most part, right? We all want to win. We all want to get in. We all want to do the thing. Right. But then your other goals are I want to graduate. I want to get to college. Now that I'm in college, I want to get a strong internship. I want to set myself up for when the game is over to be successful. But in the meantime, that first part, I'm here every day in practice. I got to have smaller goals. So what do I want to do today? Today, I want to go in there and I'm going to hit. Coach is going to throw me 100 balls out of those 100 balls. I want 30 of them here. I want 30 of them there. I don't want any pop-ups. I want hard, direct line drives. I want to make sure that I'm getting strong feedback from those around me that I'm completing all of, yeah, hey, here we are, girls. What's the goal for today? I want to come with a clear mind. I want to give full effort. I want to make sure that I'm working on what my deficiencies are. And then I want to leave in a positive manner and be able to carry on the rest of the day. If that's not what you're here for, ask yourself why. Right. Every single one of you has an opportunity to break into the field. I guarantee you, if you step up on the field and you give your best effort 100 percent of the time and you improve mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, athletically, academically, that grown man and his coaching team is not going to go. Well, you're one of the best players, but we're just not ready to put you in the game yet. Like nobody's going to do that. Right. But you have to step up with that individual intentional effort, be the example, right? Like, dude, there's so many ways to be able to engage and get in work, right? Somebody said last, a couple of weeks ago, I think they said, I'm an injury. I can't really do much. Okay, I got you. Do what the doctors tell you, but within that, find how you can get better. Study, read, look, you know, get smarter in the game, be a good dugout coach. And when you're on the field, right? If you're a starter, you have nothing but, if you know in your mind your start, you started all three years that you're there, whatever, like don't get that easy in your mind. You have to continue to push because the next phase of what you're trying to do is coming up. If you're new to the team, right, you're still figuring it out, but don't sit back and wait on somebody to show you, right? Because there's somebody, there's a sophomore, there's a junior, there's a senior that, that is comfortable. And there's an opportunity for you to come in, but you literally have to outwork every single day. And that's what I'm talking about when I say intentional effort, right? That's what I'm talking about when I say being the example. So really throwing yourself in to that mindset of what am I here for? Right? Did I show up today to just show up, right? Am I earning my scholarship? Am I earning my playtime? Am I earning my opportunity to step up and call myself a warrior? Or am I just here because this is where I decided to go because there was a nice field by the water and Cool. I get to show up because there's a couple of you of each kind on this team. And the goal is to continue to push forward and be successful as a unit to be able to, who said it? Somebody, what was the goals la uh, last time we met, right? It was to get to conference, right? Win conference. Then it was to get to regional and ultimately win a natty, right? And we said we had to get to conference first. Well, how do we get there? Well, here we are. We don't get there in January, February, when the season starts. We get there right now. Right now. This is when we get there. These are the times where I have to work my tail off so that when I show up in February, I'm already four months ahead. 
right? You guys should be coming to practice and getting your language down, your movements down, your materials down, your thoughts down, your processes down. If you're not showing up with that intent every single day, what are you doing? And I'm going through the same process right now with Tampa Catholic. I just took over as a head coach of a high school team. We just played two fall ball games. We won both of them. One was sloppy. One was beautiful, right? But we're going with intentional goals every single game. I'm learning who they are. They're learning who each other is. And it's all that psychology of getting to me mesh and mold and get with each other. But a lot of that is up to you guys. You understand what I'm saying? Like, again, I, I asked this question a couple of weeks ago. Who's the best? Raise your hand. Best hitter in the room. You're the best daggum hitter in this room. Raise your hand. Oh, oh, put her hand up. Okay. I see all my kids. Okay. Right. Raise your hand up high if you're the best hitter in the room. Okay. If you don't have your hand up unless you're a PO, why? Why? Because you're going to have an opportunity to go to the plate. You're going to have an opportunity to show who you are. And if you don't step into that with the mindset of, I have to be my best self in this moment, because the best hitter on the team can't actually help you when you're in the box. So in that moment, you have to be the best hitter on the team. And if you don't believe it now, you are not going to believe it then. It doesn't just turn on. Just like your hands need to be adjusted. Just like your feet need to be adjusted. Just like you need to not peel out of the box as a lefty. Just like you need to get the inside corner of the bag when you're running. These are all things that we have to practice in order to get right. With your mindset, your thought process, your intentional effort, how you think about yourself, the things that you put into motion, and the hard work that you put in on practice time and game day, that's going to determine how well you all do as a unit. Does all of that make sense? It's a whole lot of information. It's a whole lot of information. Sailor, where are you at? Hello. Cool. Everything makes sense. What's, what's the KH? What's behind you? What is that? They're like, we don't want to get up and unmute it. We didn't know there was talking. Stop. It's all right. If you're sitting all the way over there, I won't call on you again. That's okay. It's all of our names. So it's like Kirsten, Nikki, Haley, and Sam. Is that like your, is that your apartment? What is that your dorm room? What is that? Yeah, our apartment, our apartment. Okay. So cool. Just, just, that's awesome. That's awesome. And Sailor, you're a senior this year. Uh, fifth year. I'm a grad student. Okay. Got it. Got it. So fifth year grads. Golly, man. No. Just, just a little 11th grader. All right. Let's go on to page two. Uh, page three. Let's keep it rolling. Smart goals. Did anybody... Write down I just one of you. Tell me one person wrote down a goal under this format for themselves. Huddy, you never let me down, but I'm going to come to Mac first. Go ahead. Got to unmute there, Mac. There yeah, you go. Sorry. No, you're good. Um, <laughs> for short term or long term? Uh, whatever you prefer. I, I'm, I'm open to both. Okay. So my short term, I wanted to like increase the power or like just like my hips in my swing so like for my measurable I said like I want to hit a certain amount of times off the tee and work on like just working on my hips and then um I can achieve it obviously and it's relevant because if I continue to work I'll give myself a best chance to be successful and then for the time I said I want to take like two to three months got it right going into the spring season Right. So, you know, when you guys set these goals for yourself, part of coaching is bringing this information to your coach and saying, hey, you know, this is the individual goal that I have for myself. How can I best achieve this and how can I be my best self coming into this program and how can you help me do these things? Right. Because we want to make sure that if you want to hit the ball and increase power, increase exit velocity, increase distance to swing, you know, the ball travels off the bat, all of that stuff. Right. We want to make sure that we got the right workout program, that you're actually doing a lot of the right movements and the hand movements and you've got the right equipment. There's so many things that can go into helping you increase that. But if we don't know those goals, right, because you think as coaches, see, Players are just like kids and parents where it's like coaches and, and players because, 
you know, we think, why don't they know we've shown them, meaning coaches to players, but we haven't shown you enough, nor have we shown you the way that you actually learn. We showed you the way that we learn, and not every time is that the same, right? So not everybody translates when we when we teach it. But at the same time, you guys think because we're coaches, we should have it all figured out. We should know everything. And just by looking at you, we should be able to diagnose like some AI robot that can see every part about your brain and break it down. When most times, if you would just express how you feel or what you want to work on, right, then, then there would be programs there in order to help you get where you need to be. So my point there is, you know, write your goals down. And then with the people, the mentors, the people that are coaching you, the people that are helping you get forward, share those goals with them so that they can help you build a, cro a program. So go ahead, go ahead and share now, HUD. Okay, so for my long term, um, I did get more or get higher, more like uh, throw outs than I did last year, top ceilings. Um, okay. So I would do that or like measure it by at least getting two or three throwdowns at the end of practice each week if I already haven't done it during practice. Um, it is achievable. And then it's relevant because, like, it helps my pitchers know, like, if I have their back, like, if they make an, a mistake and they let somebody on first base, like, they know that I can have their back and get that runner out at second. I love it, right? So here we are. We're, we're 20 minutes into a conversation, right? And we've identified one player that wants to increase bad exit speed velocity and increase their power in their hips in order to become a better hitter at the plate. We've identified a catcher that wants to increase their overall pop time, their throwdowns, and their ability to uh, throw kids out when they try to steal, right? One, keep runs off the board. One, put runs on the board, right? So each one of you, if you invest the time to really think, and we can take this in softball, in academics, right? For my juniors and my seniors in less than 12 to 24 months, this is real life. Right. What are my goals? Well, I need to get a job. Uh, how will I track progress if people call me back for an interview? Is my goal realistic? I hope so. Or I'm going back to mom and dad's house. Does it relate to your overall performance? Yeah, uh, I need a job. And what is the deadline by the time I graduate or, you know, by the time the summer after I graduate is over? Right. Or I'm in a job. Right. Specific. Clearly define your goal. Uh, six months. I want to be oriented and I want to start working on my next promotion, becoming a partner, getting this certification, how you'll track progress. You know, talking to my supervisors, working on my personal qualification standards, getting into different ways and avenues. Is a goal realistic? Well, it's part of my job pipeline. So you can literally use this goal setting standard for anything in your life. Does that make sense? Right. If you break it down that simple, it answers the what do I want to do? OK, what is it? Is it worth doing? Is it relevant? How will I do it? So when you go, I don't know what to do and nor do I know how to get there. OK, well, pause. Let's break down. And I mean, you should be doing this as a team. What do we want to do? We want to win a national championship. OK, how will we track progress? Is the team getting stronger? Is the team getting faster? Is the team communicating better? Is practice looking smoother? Is coach challenging us in order to get better? Or and I'm going to put it on him or our practice is boring and we're doing the same repetitive stuff every day, right? Is it inviting and engaging? Do we keep, you know, the excitement there and do we want to come to practice every day? And if those things are happening, is the team buying in? Are you guys truly engaged on what it is that the coaches are bringing? If everybody shows up with a level of energy, like we about to turn it up, what is up? Then how can you not, right? How can you not? But you have to ask yourself, do I show up from the day that I stepped on campus, no matter what day I got here, am I showing up with intentional effort in order to be my best self? Let me ask you a question. Who on the team is, is like, like me? Who's the Energizer Bunny? You show up to practice. This kid is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and bouncing off the wall. Who is it? Sailor says her. Who is it? Anybody? Okay. Mac says it's her. You say it's you, Mac. All right. Abby says it's her. All right. So there's a couple, right? Okay. So the booth residence it says, it says it's her. So if you're the energy people, right, then think about this, right? You ever, you ever be in a dugout and hear a coach or, or a parent or somebody go, 
Come on, girls, be loud. Start cheering. Bruh, <laughs> come on. If we're at that point, where are we? Right? Why are we here? If I have to generate energy, momentum, facilitate, my job is to coach and guide that energy, right? And bring it out at times. But your job is to want to bring that energy 100% of the time that you're there. Focus on the task at hand in order to find good results. Let's keep it rolling. Anybody else want to share a smart goal that maybe they made for themselves? Go ahead, uh, Ms. Bland. Go ahead. Um, my, one of my short-term goals was not getting so frustrated in practice. Okay. And, um, measurable, I put for like having a short-term memory loss and just using like the five second reset, um, for a time bound, I gave myself a pretty long time bound until spring season. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Oh, and for relevant, I put, so like if I strike out or something, I won't take it out on fielding part of the field. I just let it go. Gotcha. So for measurable, how will you know that you're getting less frustrated? Do you have an accountability partner? Is it just an internal feeling, feeling better about what you're doing? How are you going to know that you're not getting as frustrated? I'm um, an internal feeling and I'm trying to better my thoughts in my head. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I love the fact that you shared that, right? Because it's not a, a, a skill. It's not hitting. It's not throwing, right? It's like, this is how I feel. Like, I want to be great. And, and I struggle, right? And I want to be great for my team. And I want to come through. And maybe I bobbled the ball. Maybe I didn't hit the double. Maybe whatever, right? So, or, or maybe you get frustrated when others aren't doing what they need. You know, whatever your frustration is, I love the fact that you're thinking about it, that you're identifying it, right? Because that means that somewhere in there, it's bothering you. And you're like, you know what? This ain't worth it. I'm going to go ahead and figure out what this is so that I can focus it into positive energy so I can use it to be productive on the field. And how cool is that, right? Because, you know, if we can take that process of, you know, like what's wrong with you to, okay, how can I work to get where I want to be? What work have I put in so far and what adjustments do I need to make? Or, oh man, that's so frustrating. You could be better. Sure. Right. Can we all be better at something at some point in time in our life? Right. But that doesn't take away from the work that we've done in order to be better in that process. Does that make sense? Right. Because sometimes, man, like you go and you and, and I'll just use softball as an example. Right. We go three for four this game, four for four this game, two for four this game. Right. And we're like, man, life's good. Right. We feel good. And then you hit that wall and you have that oh for three game and then you have that one for four game and you do get frustrated. And then it does bleed into the field. You say, good. Hey, I don't want to take a frustrating at bat out onto the field. Short term memory loss, because. That's what it is. This game doesn't allow for you to take things with you, right? I mean, you get to steal bases, but even they stay in the same place, right? It doesn't allow things to be taken with you, right? If you do take it with you, then it becomes heavy. If I take this strike with me, then the burden of the next strike becomes heavier. Now I have two strikes. I'm frustrated. I'm not thinking. I'm not really in it. Okay, boom. Now, ah, I should have swung at that man, right? Or boom, fly ball, here cop. Ah, okay, son. Oh, man. Now it just starts to pummel. So that frustration can certainly build up, right? So, you know, I've mentioned a couple times, I would encourage all of you. This is a big team. I don't know how it's split between JV and varsity and all of that, but it's a big team. You know, you all should figure out accountability partners, somebody that you trust, that's not going to baby you. That's not going to go, girl, it's okay. It's going to go, no, get your butt out of the bed. It's time to go get in this extra work. It's time to go get in the gym. It's time to go put in this extra mile. It's time to do our mindset work. It's time to practice on being our best self, putting in intentional effort because it's hard to do by yourself. It's not impossible. 
right? But it's hard to do by yourself. And in this environment, a team environment, when you have that yin and yang and somebody that can push you, it does certainly help a little bit. Cool. So we talked about season long girl goals. We talked about short term goals. Um, really work on this, right? You can't get where you're going. If I build a house with no plan, with no foundation, it's going to have walls. It's going to have a roof. It's going to be okay. If I build it, it's going to be like this and a little bit crooked. But if you have a foundation, if you have a plan, if you have things and ways that things are being done, you're going to find more success. So, I mean, a couple of things that we've talked about so far, right? Intentional effort. How can I be my best self? What can I bring to the table in order to be the best version of myself for my team every single day? Being the example, what am I showing? Am I showing up early or am I the kid that comes two to three minutes with the Starbucks in her hand, right? Who am I? Am I the kid that comes and I put in the extra work? Am I the kid that complains that, oh, we got to swing 10 more in this heat? Who are you, right? Are you the kid that motivates? Are you, you know, there's a couple different kinds of people, right? There's producers and there's reducers. There's givers and there's takers, okay? Producers, Pay attention when someone's talking. Producers are in it when someone's working. Producers are listening when coaches are talking. Producers go out into the world and do the work without somebody holding them accountable to it every single time. Reducers bring excuses. Reducers find a reason why something can happen. Reducers take away from everything that is being given to them and they find a solution for, or excuse me, a problem for every solution. So when you wake up in the morning, figure out what kind of person you are. Am I a producer, somebody who goes out and gets it every single day? Or am I a reducer, somebody who hangs out, somebody who always wants to be the funny person, somebody who always needs the light, but never really shines? Who am I? What am I doing? Right? Does that make sense? Love y'all, man. Let's keep it rolling. Then we talked about smart goals, right? What are my SMART goals? Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Start writing some of those things down. Hold yourself accountable to them and watch how your goals start to come forward for you. I love it. Let's keep on going to the mental skills, focus, and mental reset techniques worksheet. Anybody need a water break? All huh. right. I must be really funny tonight. Water break. Boom. Everybody starts giggling. That's good. All right. Softball, maintaining mental focus and the ability to reset quickly. Right? So you said uh, uh, you had said you use the five-second reset. So let's talk about that. The five-second reset is a simple yet powerful technique that when used or when you feel overwhelmed after a mistake, the goal is to mentally reset, clear your mind, and focus on the next play. This is especially useful when you need to quickly let go of a mistake, stay calm in a high pressure situation. So here it is, right? I mean, this is life is a three, two count. I said it before, right? Every pitch matters only until it's over. Once it's over, it no longer does anything but sit in a stat book because if I take it to the next pitch, I have a significantly less chance of making a quality decision on the next pitch because my mindset is only halfway in. Boom, it hits the glove. It's like that men in black buzzer. Okay. It's like Timon and Pumbaa. Boom, it doesn't matter, right? It's in the past. I'm moving on, right? It's a whole new world, a fantastic place and point of view. It doesn't matter. We're moving forward. Right. It can be under the sea. It can be wherever you want. You just have to let it go. Doesn't matter. You just have to keep moving forward. Does that make sense? Word. All right. Cool. Explanation. So the five second rule, I want you to find something, whatever it is for you. Maybe it's the center of your bat. Maybe it's your wrist card. Maybe it's, you know, center field on your home stadium. You know, maybe it's your dugout or somebody, your accountability partner in the dugout that has eyes on you the whole time you're hitting and they, they, you know, they're your reset point. Whatever it is for you, you have to find a way to be able to seriously dig in and let it go because the ball has a funny way of finding you. 
right? When, when we always want the ball, but when you get that error, how many's had the ball come back to you at least within three or four pitches right after that? Ball ain't come to you all game, and then it came to you, got an error, and now three pitches later, it came to you again, right? Because softball just wanted to see if you understood that it was playing with you, <laughs> right? That it was here to just wah, 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 and make you think all over the place. Make sense? So find something that helps you reset. 1-1,000, one, 2-1,000, one, 3-1,000, one, 4-1,000, one, 5-1,000. That's it. That's all the time that you have in order to be able to pull an Elsa. That's it. Because at that point in time, we have to keep moving forward. Because the true champions, the one that want to win, the ones that want to be the best, the ones that want to take conference, the ones that want to make it to regional, the ones that want to be able to get that ring and do the thing, have got to be able to pay attention to the next pitch on their swing. Whether you're on the field or whether you're, it doesn't matter. You have to be able to go to the next pitch. Cool. Find a visual cue. This could be a spot on the ground, scoreboard, clear your mind, repeat a phrase to yourself. Like it sounds funny, right? Like, hey girl, you talking to yourself? Yes, I'm positive, things are well, and I'm okay. Yes, exactly. We already do this every day, but I want you to be mindful of it, right? Okay, I'm good. Here's where I'm at. This is what's going on. I'm not worried about all that. Now I'm refocused. I want you to hit me the ball again, right? And you can build this in practice, right? You ever get a bad rep in practice or, you know, you got hit a ball and then that was it. And you're just like, okay, I'm going to the next drill. That's why it happens because you don't have a mindset of I am locked in. Okay, I got this one. Boom, I don't care about that. Now I need the next one. Hit me another one, coach. I dare you because that, Whatever, that's just me getting better. This is who I really am. Can you approach it with that mindset? I guess we'll see, right? I guess we'll see. So example, you just thrown a wild pitch and the runner advances. Who's a pitcher? Raise your hand if you're a pitcher. All right, uh, Abby, we'll go to you. Okay, you've just thrown a wild pitch. Abby says, no, I didn't. It was on time. That's a pass ball. And the runners advance. Okay, uh, what do you do? Get the ball back. How do you clear your mindset? Um, I would say I just turn around and I take a deep breath and I tell myself that it's a game. We literally live on a rock and it's all going to be okay. I just got to work harder and get better and throw more strikes. <laughs> throw more strikes, right? Yeah. You ever mm -hmm. heard that? Just throw strikes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thanks uh -huh. for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Cool. Well, I love that. I appreciate that. Right. So, so you have the ability to be like, Hey, okay. Wild pitch. Got it. Balls in the dirt. She can make it work. All good. Mm -hmm. Right. No mm -hmm. big deal. Right. So when do you use it right after the pitch before the next batter steps up? Right. That's what she said. I clear my mind. I realize it's not, you know, life ending. We're going to continue to push forward. I'm sure you guys wrote down some examples of kind of when you would use a visual cue. I know, uh, you said that when you have a bad fielding opportunity, uh, you know, I, I want to find that visual cue and reset. Anybody else have anything that they do that either, is either a visual cue or another uh, form of resetting your mindset when something does or does not go the way you want? Anybody? Go ahead, Grace. In my 44 glove uh, in high school, my coach gave me a saying with a ball on it says play well play hard play for you and uh he passed away of cancer a few years ago but inside of my glove i got that stitched so it says pwphpfy and i just whenever something's going wrong i pull my hand out go over top of it graze it a couple times and know that i'm playing for him as well as myself and the the other eight girls on the team on the field with me at that point point. and i love that i love that man thanks for sharing that right i mean that's I mean, that's what the game does. It creates relationships that change our lives. It puts us in place to meet people that can literally impact us forever. So I appreciate that. And for her, you know, uh, that is a, a way to kind of realize that she's in the spot that she needs to be in. And, you know, people are with her and, and spirits are with her and she is pushing forward. I love that. 
Next one, we talked about visualization, right? We did that in the class. We all closed our eyes. We put ourselves in the moment. We thought about where we were at. Um, is it Angelise? I want to come to you because you had your hand raised before I move on the next one. Tell me, go go back to your example. Example of the five second reset. Yeah, just what you had your hand raised for. Yeah. Um. Typically, if it's like I mess up for like hitting or something, I let a really good pitch go by. I take a minute and like um look at my coach, see what kind of signs he wants to give me or what he has to say. And then I go back and I look at the foul pole, just take a really deep breath, like those five seconds to reset my mind. And then I go back in with the positive mentality of I'm going to hit and I have to do what I have to do to get the ball in play. I love it, right? Because the game is hard, right? The game is not easy, right? As you get better, the kids that you're playing are getting better. The adults that you're playing are getting better. You know, the teams as you go along and in the season are continuing to improve. So we have to continue to rise to those occasions, but also find moments where we can have that mental reset and be able to come back in and be stronger. Right. So I love that. I appreciate that. So visualization, um, this is a good one for me. Right. I, I tell you, I use visualization a lot when I want to do something. Sometimes I spend months thinking about it, building it in my brain, thinking it out. Then I put little clues out there. I put little things into motion. It's how I've built countless businesses, countless teams. Uh, an opportunity for myself. Visualization is literally one of the most powerful. <laughs> Look at my man. Who is that, Mac? Who is that? I can't not speak to the dog. Come on. Let's say hi. This is Mateo. Okay, I, I'm gonna pin. I'm gonna pin Mac for a second. We have to see the dog. There it is. <laughs> we have to see the dog. I love yeah, it. This is this is Mateo. <laughs> and you have is that a, that's a on campus apartment or off? Uh, it's off campus. It's oh, okay. our other roommate's dog, Megan. Gotcha. So cool, man. Yeah. Okay. There you go. What's up, Meg? Cool, man. I said, sorry. I saw the dog. I'm just, uh, you know, so visualization is one of the most powerful that like, I just thought about seeing a dog and boom, one popped up. I mean, it's literally that powerful. You wouldn't imagine how strong it is. It's amazing. But, you know, literally like what you think you want to happen. A lot of times you can really manifest it, not because you have superpowers, not because you're some magical person, but because when you think about something, when you put thought, thought process into place, uh, you really now have an opportunity to be able to act on those thoughts, to be able to make goals off those thoughts, to be able to put yourself in a place to be able to take action on those thoughts. So for those of you that really want to engage and really want to move forward, visualization is a perfect opportunity. Like, let's pull up into the into the softball complex. So I'm walking from my dorm. I'm pulling up from my apartment. It's time for practice, right? I sit in the car for a few minutes. And instead of just sitting there doing nothing, scrolling, doing something endlessly, I could literally pause, put the air on, well, roll the window down, whatever it is you want to do. Right. Close my eyes and think, how do I want to move this practice? How do I want to feel this practice? What energy am I going to bring as soon as I step out of this car door? Right. Am I going to bring all my problems to the day and be a nagging Nancy and just tell the world that everything's bad and I'm going to bring bad energy to practice? Right. We can talk about issues, but we can talk about issues before or after. Right. But what energy am I bringing on the field? How am I making the girls around me better? What are my goals on the field today? How am I making myself better? Right. Because that's where it starts. I don't care what anybody says. If 20 people step on the field with a positive mindset, even if that 21st person has a bad attitude, those 20 people in their positive mindset are going to swallow that girl up, figure out what's going on, try to bring her back down to reality and get her mind where it needs to be, at least for the next two hours so that we can go get better. Because if you're not showing up to get to practice to get better, what are you showing up for? Social fun, hanging out, right? What? Why are we here? What are we doing? Because mom and dad told us for 12 years that this is what we're supposed to do and we still don't wanna let anybody down. Why are we here? we're here to win a national championship, then we have to have energy. We have to have routines. We have to have reasons that we show up and we have to have tools and things that we use 
in order to get there. So visualization, certainly one of them. What do I see for myself? How do I act for myself? And what effort am I putting into my team in order to rise everybody up? Coach Todd, how you doing? Good? What kind of energy you bring, Coach? <laughs> coach is like, I ain't saying a word. I bring good energy. We're good. All right, cool. Let's keep it rolling. We got uh, only an hour tonight, girls. We got about 15 minutes left. Who's fired up? Who's fired up? Yeah, fired up, fired up, fired up. No, no, no. Hey, I did, ha I did have a question for you, Coach. Go ahead, Hill. buddy. Yeah, man. So um, when you speak of account accountability partners, do you feel it's something from one coach to another that um, is more appropriate if I were to make a list and designate them? Or do you think it's more powerful if they pick their own? So here's what I would say, right? Because let's talk about that, right? If you pick them and you set them up, right? Well, okay, that can create positivity because we're hanging out with people we know essentially and maybe some people we don't know. So you can create, you know, an environment where people have to get to know each other, but you also can create an environment where maybe people don't necessarily get along because if we put 40 people in a room, I can assure you not all 40 people are going to want Bill Hoops to sit at their table, no matter how great and wonderful he is, right? So we all have our own personal preference for people, right? But at the same time, you know, if you let everybody just pick their own and, and you know, one or two or three people either don't get one or don't get engaged to get one. You know, for me, here's what I would do. I, I would lay down what an accountability partner is, if that's what you thought you wanted to bring into the team, right? What its purpose is. And we can talk about all that, right? What, what it is, what its purpose is, uh, because an accountability partner is just that. It's somebody that, you know, that you know and you trust that you can talk to, but that isn't going to let you bully them into letting you get by. Right. They're going to remind you, hey, did you get your workouts in? How was your effort? How was your energy? How did you do? What did you think? You know, they're going to talk to you. OK, well, girl, look, we were supposed to be at workouts at, at eight o'clock. It's nine thirty. What are you doing now? We got, you know, so you just want to make sure it's somebody that. They can get along with in order to hold each other accountable and you then have to continue to cultivate what that is. Right. And then hold accountability meetings. And how's it going? And I mean, it's a lot. Right. But it helps immensely when you have a whole group here. Let me just bring Peyton Clark on. Right. So, Peyton, how you doing? So within our group, Peyton actually created an accountability group with a couple of the girls in there. Uh, and Peyton, talk about it a little bit. So you created the group. You guys kind of talk to each other about workouts, getting up. I mean, here's a bunch of 14, 15 year olds that are getting each other up at five o'clock in the morning to go be great. You know what I'm saying? So talk about that, Peyton. Yeah. So our team, we have this group chat that we just text everything we're doing throughout the day. Uh, and it's really cool because we're all hyping each, hyping each other up with getting our workouts in at 5 a.m. Uh, while the coaches are still sleeping. <laughs> and we're like, yes, yes, who? Uh, so and so, yes, so and so. Uh, so but it's really it's really great. I think it pushes. um a bunch of people to work as well, like get up early and get something done that morning, go to school, do something softball related. And then also I like doing stuff in the morning because it frees up your afternoon to do something softball related. But then like you can do homework. Uh, like I just got back from my school. Got it, morning, but yeah. Got it. So look, that's one version, right? So for you guys, it's a little bit deeper. You're at the college level. Now you're, you're really, you get that person that you're working out with, that you engage with that can be like, Hey, you know, what was your effort level today? How did you feel? How are you going to engage tomorrow? That's kind of what an accountability of partner is, right? Somebody that's going to kind of make sure that you have that check and balance and you're not letting yourself slip and somebody that motivates you when you need it other than you and the coaching staff, because sometimes that becomes parent-like, right? And just like you can tell them to fix their swing 15 times, but if they hear it from somebody else, you know, it rocks and rolls. So um, it's just a tool that you can use. You know, some of them are already partnered up, you know, uh, they live together. So, you know, maybe that works. It just depends on if they'll give each other that hard level of accountability. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Because I mean, ultimately it is in their hands. Like you can be the best coach in the world. I can be the best mindset coach. I can give them all the tools in the world. We can bring in the best hitting coaches. They can all have all the fundamentals in the world, but if they don't do the work, if they're not in it, if they're not focused on the task at hand, then it doesn't get done. Right. I mean, that's, that's what it is. So, um, you know, again, intentional effort, accountability, uh, going in and being an example, setting good goals, talking positively yourself, using these different tools in order to be able to see yourself being the best. Because again, when I say who's the best hitter, I mean, your hands should go to the sky, right? Does that mean that a girl on your team might have a better average and might be able to hit the ball better than you, further than you? Fine. Great. But they cannot hit for you. So you have to be the best in your own mindset. They cannot field for you. They cannot pitch for you. They cannot coach for you. Right. So even at the coaching level, even whatever, wherever you're at in life, it's the best. I'm the best tournament director in the world. I'm the best taco slinger in the world. I'm the best mindset and performance coach in the world. I was the best chief petty officer in the world. Most days I try to be the best father, but I struggle at that some days. But, you know, you have to believe that you're the best in your own mind in order to be it. Because if you don't, you can never you, you just can't get there. You just cannot get there or you cannot get there as fast. Cool. So let's keep it rolling. Uh, team bonding communication exercise. So we did this last week. Uh, we're not going to do this again. Uh, there will be no notes passed up to the front in this particular class today. Okay. So we're going to skim right past that. We're done. Okay. We're done with that. Bringing it all together, the final conclusion, which is perfect because we have about 10 minutes left. Any questions right now? Questions, comments, concerns? Anybody? Cool. Let's keep it rolling. All right. Intentional effort in your daily life. Listen, I can preach until I'm red in the face, but tomorrow morning you're going to wake up and doing something on purpose is either going to cross your mind or it's not. You're either going to go to practice tomorrow and you're going to give your best physical, mental, emotional effort or you're not, right? You're going to show up and want to be a champion or you're not. Like there's no gray area. You either show up all in and you become a unit of 30 some odd kids that want to get better, that want to perform, that want to be their absolute best at everything it is that they do or you don't. That's it, right? And maybe half of you show up that way tomorrow. Fine, that half keep going because the next day, two more might show up and the next day, two more might show up. And then eventually you build the train, you build the program and you build the system that you want in order to make it to conference, in order to make it to regionals, right? And then at that point in time, the wins come, conference comes, regionals come, now recruiting increases, wins increase, morale increases, whatever, None of that gets started if you all don't go, you know what? Today's my day. Today's the day that I've just had enough of average. It is no longer for me. And my only goal from this moving forward is to be the absolute best at everything it is I do. To be the example. To live by the law of greatness. Because anything else, well, that would be uncivilized. <laughs> Ah, come on. Only the old guys know what that's from, right? So that's it. Goal setting. I want you to set goals this week. Coach Todd, I want you to set something up in the program that holds them accountable to goal setting, right? It takes time. It takes time for you as a coaching staff to get to know 36 kids goals, right? But if the object at the end of the day is to win a national championship, knowing their goals and helping them grow towards them is going to have them be more engaged to helping you grow towards yours, which is winning a national championship and making great women and helping them become amazing executives and business owners and amazing mothers and, and people and, you know, just all of that, right? Uh, that's what we do this for every single day. Mental resilience and focus, how are you got how did you stay focused in this hour? Somebody stayed focused on everything I said the whole hour. Some person is just checking in now because they're afraid questions are going to come in the last 10 minutes and they miss something. Right? Some of you are are in and out because you've got a bunch of things going on, right? So you'll get out of that 
what you put into that. So whoever you are in that spectrum, when you show up to practice tomorrow, you'll know. You'll know the kids that are turning it up. You'll know the kids that weren't paying attention. Uh, and you'll know the kids that went, I don't know, bro. Somebody just told me that I had to come here, you know, because there's some of those too. Uh, and then supporting and communicating your team. I mean, that's where it's at, right? If you are not in it for team by making yourself the best version of yourself, if you're not in it to continue to push forward, uh, if you're not in it to show up every day to support the girls around you, if you're not in it to wake up every day with the notion of why am I here? I got one opportunity. I got one chance on this earth. One, right? That could be tomorrow. That could be next week. That could be eight years from now. I could grow to be the oldest living person at 109 years old. Nobody knows what your path is, but you get to choose the steps. You get to choose the moves. You get to choose the effort. You get to choose the things that you do every single day. You get to choose where it is you want to go, how it is you want to act, and the rewards and benefits that life gives you every single day. Guess what? That's when life hits you in the gut and goes, you know what? Boom, here's a tragedy. Boom, here's something hard. Boom, here's something you can't handle. And then you got to do it all over again. So cool, man. Any questions, comments, concerns? I appreciate y'all. I'm going to see y'all again in just about two, three weeks. I'm coming back to school. I'm bringing tacos this time. So be hungry. I'm going to bring tacos this time. And I'm going to bring Coach Rob. Y'all okay if Coach Rob comes out? Look, he's like a kid in a candy store over there. Yes, I get to come. Yes, this is great. Hey, Coach Rob is is uh, is an amazing dude, man. He's an amazing dude. He, he has nothing but a passion uh, to take care of young ladies to make sure that some of the things that you all go through or went through, his players uh, get to have a little bit uh, of this coaching ahead of time. So we're changing the game, girls, one generation at a time, making it better, stronger, uh, and you all continue to make an imprint on that every single day. So if you don't have any other questions, I'm going to roll out. And uh, if you have anything, you can always email me. It's contact at Lead Your Journey. Uh, if you want to follow me on socials, it's just 60 for me. Give your boy a follow, right? I put a whole bunch of good stuff out every day. Um, and that's it. Go coach Todd. Go ahead, buddy. Sorry. I, I know the girls oh, hate me good. now because they were getting ready to get off. Um, mm -hmm. And this may be something to store into your brain. So then when we meet in person, yeah. um, maybe you can, uh, you know, address it because it, this may be a huge weighted thing and be like, Hey, what do you think? And then give me a two minute answer. So like, I get it, but, um, here's, here's one of the main issues that I'm seeing with this team. Okay. Let's go. Um, is again, this is my perception, right? But that's coaching. Like our perception is what we have to, to, <laughs> to act upon. Right. And my perception is that, um, they don't know how to hold each other accountable um, because like there are enough people like you mentioned the whole um, you either are, are you in or you're not. And to be honest with you, uh, when you said that thing about the um, what was it? The, the drivers and the, the producers and the yeah, producers uh, and reducers. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think we're about 50, 50. I think there's a lot of people that are reducers and they just don't know it. So, but so we have enough producers that we could win a title, right? But the producers are afraid to step on the toes of the others, or they don't know how to hold each other accountable uh, in a respectful way or in a nice way, because we had a big thing the other day in practice where like, you know, I, I, I get real frustrated when um, there are comments and actions and things that is not part of a winning culture and we don't have anybody on the team willing to, when they see that, nah, we don't do that. That's not what we do. Yeah. So just something for you to think about, maybe giving us some ideas or whatever, or unless you got a really short answer, but um, I just need some help on how to help them uh, get more comfortable 
holding each other accountable, like on real serious things like that, as far as things that go on in the heat of the moments, because the accountability partner thing is great for, hey, make sure you're working and, and getting up and let's do some extra work. But when we're at practice, somebody says something that's dumb, shouldn't be said, somebody that's acting up, like we need leaders that can go, nah, we don't do that. And I just, I, I feel like they're afraid to. Sure. So, um, one, I, I would say the accountability partner expands to be that person because the person that's standing up and saying those remarks that are not conducive of a positive team building relationship, their accountability partner should be holding them accountable to not doing that and becoming a better person, right? And and you could even put it into groups. You could, if you didn't want to do individual, you could, you know, here's the outfielders. You all, if you want to be great outfielders, here's your group. Was there eight of you? You're going to hold each other accountable to a process and getting better. And when one gets out of line, you know, it is what it is. But girls, I mean, I'm going to come to you. I'm going to say, look, we're all adults in this room, right? Except for the kids that are on the group. And I think this is fine for them because it's good, real life conflict resolution of what's going to happen in college. Anytime I put 36 grown women in a group together and tell them that it's a Barbie world and everything's fantastic, they're going to be like, no, bro, it ain't. This chick gets on my nerves. That chick thinks she's good and she ain't. This chick is all that and ain't. This chick shows up late. Everybody likes this one. Everybody likes that one. I don't know what's going on. I don't want to hang out. Like, it just happens, right? And you are in the middle of the psychological process that went over last two weeks ago of team building, right? You just came to campus in August. You have senior leaders that have left. They've moved on. They're gone. Right. So now you have one, maybe a few other fifth years that are here holding the leadership down. Right. And, and and then you have other seniors and then so you have new freshmen. So you're in the storming phase. You're right in the middle of this girl said that. And why are you going to do this? And ain't nobody got time for that. And, you know, catch me outside. How about that? And you're right in the middle of all that. You, you understand what I'm saying? So this is what happens when you put a unit together now. What you all have to decide is, is it worth working through getting over, holding each other accountable to adult conversation, really getting deep into why we're doing this? This isn't high school. We don't have clicks. We're not hanging out. There's no, you know, Jenny and Susie said, there's no, I'm this, there's no, I'm that. This is grown woman, real world. If you want it, come and get it. Otherwise, just stop talking Go to the back, tell coach you made a mistake, and go home. Right? I mean, that's what the transfer portal is for, right? If you're not happy where you're at and you don't want to be there, pull your card out, go home. No one is going to be mad at you. We'll help you get where you need to be. The game ends for everyone eventually, but it's time to move on. Because here's where we're at. And I said this to you two weeks ago. Like, let's be real. Let's pull the rubber. Let's pull the rubber bandaid off. Because you said real quick, I don't got to be nowhere for another two hours. Right? This is up to how long you want to keep them. Right? I mean, if you want to pull the bandaid off, right? Like, some of you are here because this is where you ended up. Some of you are here because Weber was your first choice. Some of you are here because you were other places and transferred in. Some of you are here for whatever reason you're here for. None of that matters. You're here. I don't care why you're here. I mean, I do. You understand what I'm saying? I care. I'm a human being. I care. I'll give you a hug. I'll give you a day off. I'll give you a trainer. I'll give you whatever you need in order to be your best self. But ladies, let me tell you something. Softball does not care. The ball is going to find the strike zone. The catcher is going to find the glove. The outfielder is going to snag you out. The dugout is going to stress you out. The strike zone is going to get bigger. The games are going to get harder. The days are going to get longer. The time is going to get shorter. And you have a choice to make on whether you're going to show up and give it everything you have to not let that 10-year-old girl down that went through all the BS she had to go through to get here. Or you're not. And you're wasting time.
and you want to nitpick. And you are the people that when you get into the real world, you're going to have a hard time finding a job. You're going to have a hard time securing employment. You're going to have a hard time maintaining relationships. You're going to blame the world for everything that ever happened to you because you don't want to listen to the people that have been through it that are telling you how to make it better now. Make your own mistakes. But when you step in between the lines, leave the BS at the door and come to win. Right? Because I'm telling you, even if you're JV and varsity, there's JV kids that are not here to be JV. They're here to step up and take your spot. Right? I mean, you can be at the top and fall down quickly. Those at the bottom have nowhere to go but up. So here we are. We're 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 in some cases, close to 23-year-old grown women that are, be paying that are being paid actual money to get a degree, to show up, be a professional, because that's what it is. When you play travel ball, you got to be a kid on a field playing to have fun with your parents and your friends. Okay, I need you to make the switch. You are now a professional that's getting paid to show up and do a job. This is your first center of employment. So when you show up, if you're scheduled hours to go to work or 6 to 8 a.m. for weights and you show up not at 6, you are delinquent in your job performances. I'm just telling you, this is the reality of life. This is the truth. I'm speaking to you what a lot of people won't tell you. This is the truth. Talk to last year's seniors. See how they're doing right now. Talk to the seniors from two years ago. See how they're doing right now. Call the seniors from three years ago. This world, man, it's hard. Use this opportunity now to make your life the best it can be. You will never have less responsibility than this. You will never have less debt than this. You will never have more energy than this. You will never have anything less to do in your life than this. Your job is to wake up, go play ball, make your body in the best shape of his life, mess around with your friends for a little bit and go write a paper that a professor tells me. How can we not be fully engaged in that and giving it everything that we have so that when the rubber meets the road and real life checks in at 23, I'm prepared to move forward because those of you that are playing games now, you will not learn your lesson and you will play games two, three years from now, and you'll be the ones blaming the world on why things aren't going your way. Just get it in gear. It's too easy not to. It's harder to actually goof off and do the wrong thing. I don't know if that's what you were looking for, but that's what you got. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, like I've, 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 a lot of you I know and you're great athletes and you've got great ability. Cool, man. Have your parties, right? Enjoy the college life. Hang out with your friends. Do what you got to do. Go white water rafting. Go experience kumbaya. Go sing on Friday night karaoke, right? Go do whatever it is that you want to do. But that's in your off time. When it's time to go to work, we lock in, we engage, we go to work. That's it. Word up. I love y'all, man. So uh, I'm going to put together month two's program. I'm going to send out a little bit early. So when we get to the discussion phase, uh, you all have an opportunity to see it beforehand a little bit different than we had. Um, I am here. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Uh, for those of you that are getting it, for those of you that are absorbing and paying attention and, and really locking in, good for you. Because, you know, I can show you six, 14, 15 year olds in there that have been with me for seven months and they're in, they're locked in. They'll step on that stage right now and feel good about themselves, right? In that same practice with you because of their mind, not because of their ability, because of how they think about themselves, because of the transformation that they've made at a young age in order to go get everything it is that they want, right? You're in a unique opportunity. You're one of three universities in the whole state that a coach has brought in to go through this program. So I implore you, take it serious, right? Your whole life, you've been asking for tools in order to think better, feel better, move better, act better, be better. Okay, knock, knock, who's there? <laughs> better, better who? Better you. So let's get rolling. Y'all ready? Okay. Have a good night. Peace Thank out, Girl you. Scouts. Bye-bye.